Welcome to Sharkfelt, where I felt that. As someone who was too young to be a scene kid when it really popped off, I got excited seeing its resurgence in modern media. This inspired me to Needlefelt Gur, one of the most popular characters in emo culture. I start by rolling up my base wool tightly and poking at it with my two-pronged felting needle to begin shaping the head. Eventually wrapping more wool around the basic oval shape and then needle felting it in to bulk out the head some more. Off camera, I poked into the top and bottom of the head to flatten those areas out, and then I start poking the sides of the head to make it more cubical in the back, making sure to leave the front side rounded for the face. I love the Invader Zim art style because it has so many interesting shapes like this. Now I stab into the ends of all of the sides to define the head's square edges. While needle felting its shape, somehow the head became concaved on the top and bottom, so I felt in a medium tuft of base wool onto those areas with my two-pronged felting tool to round them out. Still have no idea how this happened. Once his head is no longer caved in, I set a large amount of base wool onto my felting mat and then roll the head up into it, needle felting as I go to make the head more rectangular and also bigger so that it's easier to work with to avoid poking myself in the future. Now that the base of the head is done, we can move on to the body. Using a felt stencil depicting mushrooms already set up on my felting mat, I place a tuft of base wool down into the second largest one and then begin stabbing at it with my two-pronged felting needle. This will create a basic shape reflecting how I want the body to look later on. Taking it out of the stencil, I continue to felt it freehandedly until it's in the shape of half of a cone. Here I pick it up to give you a better look of what I mean. Getting my green wool out from its packaging, I put an even amount of it onto the back of the head and gently poke it in, not too deep, so that none of the base color can peek through the green. Then I just repeat this step onto the sides, front, top, and bottom until the entire head is shrouded in green. If you're following along, make sure that you cover the edges really well with enough green wool, because those are always the problem areas for me. Luckily, I didn't have that issue this time. Off camera, I place the tuft of green wool onto my felting mat, then set the base of the body down onto it and fold the left side of the green tuft over on top of the body like a jacket. Next, I felt it into place with my two-pronged felting tool. Eventually doing the same with the right side, then needle felting in a tiny tuft of green wool onto the bottom. Pushing in pin needles through the neck into the head to hold everything still, I attach the body to the head by stabbing at the extra bits of green fluff I left off at the end of the neck for this purpose. Once attached, I align pin needles down the center of his face to use as a symmetry guide, then take my bright white wool out of its packaging and ball up a small amount of it to use as his big ol' blinkers. Now that I've put the tuft of wool down onto the face, I felt it into the correct spot symmetrically on each side with my two-pronged felting needle. Making sure I'm keeping them bug-eyed on purpose by poking in the outsides around the edges of the eyes more than the center of them to retain his iconic goofy look. Grabbing my pink wool out of its package, I take a tiny tuft of it and place it into a felt stencil which has some dog bone cutouts shown on it. Then put it down into only the center of a bone so that I can use its rectangular shape as a guide for Gur's tongue. I shape it accordingly using a medium sized felting needle, then pop it out of the stencil once it's finished. Getting out my black wool from its packaging, I take a thin strip of it and place it into the middle of the tongue. Then using my smallest felting needle, I poke the tongue's crevice in, in that signature cartoony line style. While I'm accomplishing this, I'm being careful not to poke too deep so that it doesn't show up on the other side, which is difficult for a piece this thin. Now I snip off most of the fluff at the end, leaving just a bit to attach it to the mouth. Pushing my pen needles into place, leaving Gur looking like a voodoo doll, I begin to join his tongue to his mouth using a small felting needle. I start with the tongue pinned flat, felt it in a bit, take the pins out, then felt it on vertically to get the tongue sticking out the right way. Taking a tiny tuft of black wool, I put it down onto the face and then, uh... 
I set about creating his triangle nose with a small felting needle. Although you could also make his nose an oval, as I found depictions of both styles. Then, take a short thin strip of black wool and felt in a tiny line right below his nose to finish it off so that we can move on to crafting his pupils. Oh, and don't forget to line it up with his tongue's crevice. To form his pupils, I ball up a small amount of black wool, place it into the center of his eye whites, and then needle felt it into position with a small felting needle. Then, of course, repeat this onto the other eye, trying your best to keep it symmetrical. This might take a few tries, but it doesn't matter too much since bro was silly looking anyways. Now we can needle felt the stitches running down the middle of his face by taking a long, thin strip of black wool and placing it in between his eyes. Then carefully poke it in using the same small felting needle as before. Next, just continue the step all the way up his forehead to the top of his head and down along his back, leaving a bit of space at the bottom open for his tail later on. Pulling out my gray wool, which is actually a pastel purple, I put a rectangular shaped tuft of it on his chest and begin making the base of his dog costume's zipper. Oh yeah, for the uninformed, Gur is actually a robot in a dog costume, not an actual dog. So, now you know I guess. Carrying on, next we'll create the teeth of his zipper by needle felting a long strip of black wool in a square zigzag pattern with a small felting needle. I did the step in two parts, which to me was easier, but you can really do whatever process fits you. With that out of the way, we'll now set off to making the zipper's pull tab. I completed this by placing a small amount of pastel purple wool into the dog bone stencil yet again to use just the rectangle portion as a guide while I stab said wool into shape. Once it's holding its form well enough, I take it out of the stencil and continue to freehand felt it on my mat until it's thicker at the bottom and tapered off up at the top as shown in his character design. Then we'll create the illusion of the hole in the bottom of his pull tab with yet another thin strip of black wool by putting it down near the bottom of the tab and gently poking in a rectangle shape, being careful as to not poke too deep and have the black wool peek out onto the other side. Next, I snip off the end of the zipper and then fray the edges with my finger to make it easily attachable. As per usual for connecting pieces, I pin the pull tab into place and then felt it into the very top of the neck under the head with a medium-sized felting needle. To craft the ears, I turned a felt stencil depicting bears with big all heads upside down and tucked a skinny tuft of black wool into the corners of its cheek. Then, shaped it accordingly by stabbing at it with the same medium-sized felting needle. Eventually, I pop it out of the stencil and continue to work on it freehand on my mat and repeat this process onto the other ear until I'm left with a pair. Looks pretty even to me. Next, I snip off the extra bits of fluff from the ears that I don't need and then pin the ears to the far back corners of his head and start attaching them with a small-sized felting needle. Looks easy enough in the clips, but it was so hard to pin down skinny pieces of wool to a tiny corner section, but we got it done. It's a miracle I didn't poke myself. To make the arms, I got out a small piece of black wool and put it into one of the petals of a stencil with flower cutouts on it, then started going to town on it with a medium-sized felting needle, gradually switching over to my two-pronged felting tool. As always, I then take it out of the stencil and freehand felt it on my mat a little bit to keep it three-dimensional as opposed to flat. Then I reduplicate the process, this time just using a bigger flower petal for the legs. Here, I decided to show you that there really is a difference in size between the arm and leg, in case you didn't believe me, because I wasn't sure if it was picking up on camera. As you can tell, because I continue to finish up the rest of the arms and the legs right next to each other. Now I'm creating his spindly tail by putting a small amount of black wool into the left corner of a mustache cutout on a felt stencil. After some time passes, I have the wool stabbed mostly into place, pop it out of the stencil, and keep freehand felting afterwards as usual. Continuing to shape it on my mat, I snip off the extra fluff to make its attachment smoother later on once it's finished. Deciding to finally give Gur his limbs, I pin the arms into place at the sides of his body and attach them by poking at their base with a medium-sized felting needle. When they're mostly connected, I take out the pins and continue poking. Next, we'll join the tail to the base of the body using the exact same method and keeping in mind to leave a little gap between the last stitch and the tail. 
Now we'll attach the legs and carry on the pattern of doing the same process to them as well, this time on the very bottom of the body. Also, don't worry about the ears being totally pressed up against the felting mat right now. I promise they perk right back up once he's flipped back over onto his butt. Adding the final details, I needle felt in a little bit of black wool at the top of his arms to begin making the dog costume's arm stitches. There's three of them on each side, evenly spaced out to be specific. Unsheathing my small wool shears, I snip away at any stray hairs so that the glamour shots turn out even more glamorous. Then it's just a process of continuing to make him a little more bald until our king is ready for the runway. With that last snip, I wipe off any cut strands from his face and now he's ready for his big photo shoot. 